Don't wait for shit to come to you. We're gonna have to stop producing. I want return on my investment. I'm in a really, really f***ed up situation right now. This client is one of the most important clients that I have. I need to make this work. This is ridiculous. Ultimately, somebody has to go. The last person to stay is going to be Guys, like, comment, share, subscribe to all those great things that helps this channel grow. Let's get back to the video. As I have said before, I am looking for a killer and not a kitten. Here's a perfect situation in the deal that I am involved with in which I want to hire somebody that's going to be able to handle a situation just like this. All right, so I got to deliver this 5207P to Hong Kong by the 7th and it's the 2nd and this client needs to get to freaking Geneva to drop off the watch at Malka because they've been waiting already for four days and my guy is just not answering so he just told me to call him. Hope he actually picks up this time. Yo. Andre. Andre. Hey, Peter. Bro, so what 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 the f is going on with this piece? Like, what, what, are, what are we doing here? There's like a small situation. It's f***ed up. It's a f***ed up scenario. What do you mean? I was flying back. I was flying back from Dubai. I've been in London for a couple of days. Yeah, because look, I, I, I just got off I just got off the phone with John. He's like, uh, whatever the hell the client's name is, he's like he's 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 not taking the watch or some shit. What, what does that even mean? You know, it's not such a good situation. <laughs> but uh, this guy he's he's saying that he has second thoughts and he goes, Andre, I appreciate your effort in trying to sell this watch for me but right now isn't such a good time. Okay guys, to clarify the situation a little bit further, I brought out some actual human being representatives to understand better how the situation played out. Over here, we have the client of the 5207P. Over here, we have the dealer, Andre, who offered me Adrian the 5207P. Then we have Kevin over here, who was the client that purchased the 5207P. And over here, we have Peter representing the dealer who owns the RM3503. So here's how the situation played out. We'll take it in steps. Step number one, 5207P client offers the watch to Andre the dealer. Andre offers the watch to me. I offer the watch to the client. Client confirms the price. I then go back to the dealer and ask him 30 times. Keep in mind, I asked him many times if the watch is actually available because he did not own it. He clarified to me that yes, it was. We finished off the deal and the next step in the process was the client asked me to send the money to this dealer over here for the RM3503 to fund the purchase. Step number three, I instructed the client to go to Malka Emit office in Geneva to drop off the watch. So after I instructed him to drop off the watch in Malka, there is no longer response is, and that's when the phone call comes in. This is exactly why this type of bullshit happens all the time. I asked you 30 times, 30 times I asked you, is it okay to muzzle the watch with my client? You said yes. Send me pictures of the watch. The client demanded that I wire John. I wired John. Then the client said he has to leave by the, 20, uh, by, by the 28th to Geneva. He said, okay, send John the money for the 3503. Okay, I send money to 3503. Hey, Adrian, this guy needs to, leave to, uh, needs to leave Geneva by the 28th. Okay, no problem. Set up Malka, sent the wire. The guy goes off the radar for five days. You're not answering me for three days. My client is blowing me the fuck up. And here we are again. You're, all of a sudden, he changes his mind. So what, what am I supposed to do with this? I mean, I'm not really positive. The situation is shitty. This is why I asked you 30 fucking times. Dude, this client is one of the most important clients that I have. I need to make this work. Unless this dude can find me another 5207P, uh, I'm, I'm fucked here. What I need you to fucking tell the guy is, look, I, you're getting top dollar for your 5207P. Take that money, and if you're thinking the 3503 is going to go down in price, well, guess what? Then so will probably 5270P. Take the 750 now, and then whenever you're ready to buy the 3503, then you buy the 3503. In the meantime, you promised you you muzzle the watch with somebody, right? You gave your word. I sent payment. We set up Malka. My client is waiting, and now you just pull this bullshit. I need you to call the guy and give me a call back at your earliest convenience. You gotta give me at least another day or two. Just call me back or send me a fucking message and actually answer the phone this time because I'm in a really, really fucked up situation right now. This is absolutely unacceptable. We need to figure out the situation ASAP. So basically Andre's calling me right now and he's gonna let me know what his client has said. Andre, what's up? Adrian? Yo. Hey, you have a minute? Yeah. Uh, so I spoke to the client. I know that we had been asking for 35K. Um, we had a bunch of backs and forth, uh, a bunch of conversations. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out what happens. 
In the meantime, somebody's about to get eliminated. We're going back and forth, back and forth, and uh, ultimately, somebody has to go. And the last person to stay is going to be David. You can go back to your desk. I'm, I'm so relieved that they picked me. I want to show what I'm worth, and I guarantee they didn't make the wrong decision. Josh, so for us, it was a decision based on a few factors. It doesn't reflect to you as a human being. We like everybody that's in here. But as Anna said, ultimately, somebody stays, somebody goes. I think that you can be successful in this business. I think one of the things that we personally felt that we're missing is the commitment. I, we felt that there's, you have maybe too many things going on in your life, be it other ventures, be it other priorities and things of that nature. Unfortunately, in this job, it requires to be all in. It's all in or nothing. You can be successful in this career, and if you were to give it a shot again, whether it's here or somewhere else, I think the number one thing that we all agreed upon is commitment. You gotta start one step at a time and you gotta stay consistent. If you don't stay consistent, sales is probably not for you. It looks like I'm the first contestant to go home. I think they were starting to realize my head wasn't fully in the game. I know this is a position that takes 100% dedication, and I just don't think I'm ready for that at the moment. That being said, thank you to Roman for the opportunity, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the contestants succeed. As I said, this job requires blood, sweat, and tears, and a 110% commitment. Unfortunately, Josh just didn't have it. So I wanted to have a meeting with the remaining contestants just so it's pretty clear to them what my expectations are going forward because it's getting about that time. David, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why do you think you didn't get eliminated? Because I give it my all. I'm really committed to this. I, I believe in uh, what I can do at Luxury Bazaar. Um, I can see uh, I can see myself doing well here. I can see somewhat of a light uh, at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you've well, now that you finally sold a couple of I, things. I did, yeah, and, and thank you so much for, for those encouraging words because being a salesperson and, you know, I, I'm used to, you know, lulls, but uh, I can be quite hard on myself. I guess it's not the only metric that you use to gauge success, but it's a big one. And but it is. Yeah, so the first month I was really uh, a fish out of water. Uh, I wasn't able to you know, complete any sales, and I was really tough on myself. But uh, going forward, the second month, I'm, I'm up to, I think, around nine or ten watches, and, you know, even more so, I, I've consigned about a quarter million dollars worth of watches, which I think is important as well. So even if I wasn't able to sell, I was, you know, actively looking in to generate leads and to bring in new merchandise so that my colleagues could sell. Kevin, why do you think you stayed? I think I've just been trying to show what I could bring to the table, not just in sales, but just like team team formality, like just unity wise and family base. I feel like when I walk in here, I walk in my front door of my house, it's just comfortable. I feel like I belong in a, in a sense, it's weird. Um, and then I think my hustle speaks for itself. A lot of people pull me to the side and they just like, yo, like, you know, when you sat down, Roman told you, you're gonna have the hardest time in this challenge. And I came in and literally showed everybody that it wasn't the, I mean, it's hard, absolutely. Humbly speaking, this is a hard industry. You can't just show up here and do well overnight. It takes time. I came in here with the least knowledge, literally the least knowledge when it comes to watches, but the, but a lot of sales experience. And I was well, able I to sell seven should, things. Don't sell yourself short because what you came in here with is real 10 years experience. Yeah. And when it comes to salespeople, it doesn't matter if you were selling stuff at Cartier, or you were selling cell phones, or, where you're yeah. selling socks, it makes no difference, right? So you do have experience, don't sell yourself short. In this short period of time, I've already been able to accomplish so much, build strong relationships. It's crazy to think that like, I was just selling cell phones, now I'm selling my dream watches. That being said, job's not finished, I know people are going home and I'm not trying to be that person. Peter, why do you think you stayed? I feel like I've been showing a good amount of initiative in terms of both you know, looking over deals that are coming in, showing that I can be a buyer, stay on that aspect, the mechanical aspect, I feel like it does bring a little bit to the table, and even just helping out with general day-to-day -day things. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I said change out batteries, change out links, and then just overall, I mean, even speaking with customers. Like, I, I've had a great time in, you know, encouraging words from everybody and speaking with clients, educating them about stuff that I like. What do you think the main reason was that Josh left? He said it wasn't him. He was, yeah, he was, he kind of checked out, and I don't think his... Well, I mean, his work ethics. Thing. Okay, well, I think Kevin said it best in terms of work ethic. And, and you also said it best because you kind of checked out. 
you were almost there last week. You almost checked out last week. Because at some point you're like, oh, f this isn't working, this isn't working. You tend to get discouraged and checked out. The one thing you guys need to understand that this is a constant. I'm gonna give you one last piece of advice. Don't wait for shit to come to you. To take in everything that's given to you, but at the same time, go out and get it. We've gotten to a place where now we're gonna have to stop producing. Because every time you guys walk into that door and you sit down at the table, it costs me money. I want return on my investment. It's been long enough. There's three guys remaining that better start producing. So after that meeting we had, Roman lit a match under my ass. I definitely can't go home. I left my life in Switzerland behind me. La Suisse, je vous aime. But Philadelphia is my home now. Lovely piece. These pieces have gone down in, in price recently, so it's a great time for prospective buyers to, uh, to inquire and get themselves into really, I think, a very, very pretty pretty olive day date. The second launch we received, Yachtmaster 2, uh, probably the most desirable configuration for this piece with the blue ceramic bezel um, and the Mercedes hand. The third watch we got, so this is the 37 millimeter Yachtmaster with the Oyster Flex bracelet. A really beautiful watch for someone with a smaller wrist or for the special ladies in your family. I'll go ahead and uh, inform my client that the watches arrive safely and um, you know the whole intake process will go there and we'll hope to get them paid out uh, uh, within the day. So what we have here is we just received um, a Vacheron. Shout out to Brian, one of my good clients. We're really becoming close. Um, we stay in touch and he wanted to swap this out. He bought this from me about a month ago and he was just really transparent. He's just kind of tired of it, he's bored. Um, so we got them swapped out for an AP. So look forward to your AP. You'll have it by tomorrow. So we just sold this naked 116610. This is a ceramic submariner. Sold for a little bit over $10,000. Absolute steal in today's market. Off to a new home. Hey, so I had a family friend of mine um, reach out to me. He was looking to get his first piece and he actually wanted the yellow Oyster Perpetual, but we decided on this Datejust 126200. So basically this is a watch that sourced for a returning client. He bought this for his wife. This is the Rolex. This is a 268655 Ever Rose Gold. Pretty cool piece. So she's going to be a happy camper. As they say, happy wife, happy life. She doesn't know about it. But um, yeah, I'm about ready to call him and follow up. I sourced this from Hong Kong. Just got here today. So I'm just going to give him a quick call and let him know what's up. Hey Scott, how's it going? It's going. How we doing? Good, good. Staying busy as always. How about you? You know it. Uh, well, I've got the watch here and it looks as described. It is brand new, unworn, and it still has the green on the uh, the green Rolex sticker on the back, actually. Even, even better. Awesome. So, so your wife is going to be a happy camper for Christmas, for sure. Panty dropper? <laughs> For, for sure. That's awesome. It's full set, right? You got the... Uh, yes, sir. It's got, I have the uh, card here, the hang tag, and the warranty booklet. Everything comes with it. Full set. Awesome. Can't wait. Yes, sir. We will uh, talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Always a pleasure. All right. Yes, sir. Bye. Thanks, Bob. So there's three guys remaining and there's a lot of things that go on at Luxury Bazaar at any given time. There's leads coming from all angles. There's social media aspects of the business. There's phone calls, there's texts. It's very hard to streamline the process. So here's me sitting down with them, giving them all the tips and tricks in the book to ensure they're successful. If I was in your guys' shoes here, here's what I would do. Because the name of the game right now is creating your own type of leads. Of course. And I think the easiest mm -hmm. part is our Facebook group. Mm -hmm. The easiest part is through Instagram. Have you guys followed hashtags on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost six five hundred LN, right? Yeah. See who follows that. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name's Peter. You know, I'm at Luxury Bazaar. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. You know, if you ever need anything, let's exchange numbers. Boom, lead yeah. in the system, and so, just and just keep that rolling. A lot of my traction hours too, and I'm noticing this. This is like a guarantee, dude. The minute I like pull in front of my house, park, get inside the living room every day, like three, four, like inquiries where it's like, I guess people are getting out of work, they're like winding down, and they're like scrolling or going through the stuff, so. I that's... think that if you guys reach out to five to 10 people a day on Instagram, mm -hmm. five to 10 people a day on our Facebook group, it's called 10 people a day, five days. It's 50 new people a week that you just exchange numbers mm -hmm. with. In a month, that's 200 people. Something, Something is gonna hit. At the end of the day, I know you guys wanna make money. I yeah. know you guys want to create sales. I know you guys want to make a career and a name for yourself. Yeah. And right now, I, it's just taking more time than it was a year ago, which is totally fine, but this is where we see what you're made of. So Adrian gave some great advice on how to generate new leads 
and find new clients. Just to give you guys an idea, these are all the chats I'm in, hundreds and hundreds of messages of just potential deals that I'm out there to get. Today, we received um, a shipment from Andrew, shout out to Andrew, on a consignment piece, on an AP, 15400. ST. So we have a 15400 ST white here. Actually, Kevin's first purchase. Yeah. Nice job well done. Thank you. Intake process begins. We're going to test it out. We're going to send it out for, for additional testing. Uh, but at first glance, this is a watch that's clearly been worn. It's a watch that has already been polished. I can tell by the finishing. I can tell by the bezel aesthetics. So therefore, a watch like this would need to require additional service. Send it back to our masters to repolish or re-clean re it up and make sure all functionality is working. The watch is authentic at first sight. I can tell by the papers, I can tell by the movement, I can tell by the serial number, I can tell by the weight, I can tell by the look. Yesterday, interesting enough, we had a solid, solid move. Shout out to my boy Peter, sitting over there all chill. Uh, I had a client named Tony. Tony, shout out to you. He's looking for a specific piece for his lady for the holidays and it probably took us, what, a total of maybe an hour and a half. I believe that there's five or four active listings in the United States that are priced astronomically high. We found them this watch in probably less than 13 hours. No, really no, no, hold on. Less, right? Way less, bro. We found okay, it in a like few hours after a few made hours. Call, said he wanted it, wired us the money. We got the watch incoming. It'll be in his hands, what, next week? Yep, and shout out to Tony. He was super quick and convenient with us and sent the wire already, and you'll be receiving that watch shortly. I wanted to pull Kevin into Adrian's office to give him a little bit of advice on starting a new month and forgetting about the past. My biggest takeaway every month is even if you had a bad month, there's every single month it's a new start. You don't want to look back and say, you know, oh, I had a bad month. Forget all that. As long as you're consistent in between and just kind of have like that straight line of consistent months and then it turns into growth, I think you'll do well. My first month starting here, I was doing like 200,000, 300,000. Uh, you know, 400,000. And then I remember like one month I hit like 600, right? Mm. And then the next month I hit 800,000. And for a while I was around that 800,000 mark, not able to break a million. So this month wasn't a good month at all, just being transparent. Um, I think I did like five deals total, which, okay. you know, isn't what I'd like to do. I don't like to, you know. And being, and being out for a week and not being able to really lock in, that, that hurt me a lot, that one week. Because then coming back, it was really like... It's tough. Mental, mentally, mentally, it's very tough. Yeah. The funny part about this business is like you could sell nothing for two weeks and then one day you could sell your whole month. Yeah. You know, but as long as you keep that positive mindset and consistency all the way through and don't really think about what happened last week or what happened last month, you should be fine. Major shout out to Alex. I honestly think the guy is misunderstood. He has a huge heart and he's always willing to pull us new guys to the side and give us some advice around how to sell and some good techniques on how to be successful. So Alex, um, I understand you, brother. Thank you for everything. Yeah. Peter thinks this looks like a Tudor. I think it's amazing. Look at this the Moser-esque dial. Moser-esque. The Moser-esque dial. Moser-esque. Moser-esque. Spell it. Moser, uh, M-O-S-E-R-E-S-Q-U-E. -E. <laughs> uh, what, what does that watch do, David? So uh, this watch has a uh, alarm, I believe. You uh, believe or you, you I sure? believe I literally just picked it up so I'm, I'm about to reference what it does first of all I'm going with the aesthetics and then after I'll go and uh, and see the, uh, the various attributes that it might have so okay. I literally just picked it up What does this do? Why is that red? Is it p potentially a, uh, a, a chronometer that goes both ways? Yeah, so I got the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> no, this is a safety feature. This a is safety how, feature. This is how you know your crowns are open, and oh, this is how they know it's safe to go diving. Matt, what I want you to talk, find out on this, I'm yes. going to give you three things to find out. Ready? Please. Find out the origin of this alarm movement. Okay, yes. Find out, so you were right. Mm -hmm. Find out what the story is behind the master compressor line. Okay, yes, of course. It's like a whole to-do. Yeah, yeah. And last but not least, tell me, the difference between the original reversal that was made in 1931 versus the modern reversal that was revived in the 70s. Very well. This sold. This one was all hell of a. Hell what, what, what is it? So this is a Amvox alarm as well. Are you sure this is an alarm? Uh, it, it is. Yes. You sure? Well, yes. I mean, you have the alarm function there with the uh, on and off. Well, let's see. How does it work? So I haven't unwrapped the watch yet. I just told so you it. sold the watch, but you don't really know what it does. And if I told you that this is not an alarm, but a chronograph, what would you say? Where is the pusher? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's the secret behind these. The pusher is the crystal. Oh, wow. Okay. And that allows you to turn that on or put it on safe where the crystal won't depress. So if I wind this watch, you notice the chronograph got going. It's the only chronograph of its kind that 
you can use to depress the crystal to start, stop, and reset the chronograph. No, that's fascinating. So what I want you to now do is tell me about the Austin Martin relationship with Jäger Lecoult. Jäger Lecoult? Jäger Lecoult. Jäger Lecoult. And I want you to then explain to me how that whole thing works. Excellent. Good luck. What do you got going on? What kind of salesman are you? I'm a... What came the, first, the chicken the, or the egg? The best salesman here, period. Yeah, Hands yeah, down. Better than me? Not even a question. What about me? Both of you put together. What are your numbers at? That's great. Let me explain. Let me let me <laughs> let me explain something to you, both of you. It's, it's, it's not about who, who's who's a, who's a better wide receiver, Justin Jefferson right now or Julio Jones? Roman Sharp. Here's what it comes down to. What does it come down? I'm in a business, and my no. Abraham Lincoln was alive. I'm the first. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. If I if That's I right. if I no sit down yeah. for a month if I and do nothing same. but sales, same. I'll beat you. Same. I'll you wanna, beat you. You want you want to play that? No, <laughs> but I got to do. No. So do I. But you want to play? You, you won't be. You won't be, a, be, you, be better, unless unless be better, unless you put a unless you put a padlock on that Why door and tint those Why windows. We we'll, go, we'll go to Miami for a month. You chill up in your spot. I'll chill up in my spot, and we just go to town. Bro, I like that idea though. I'm down. He's not part of this. He's like, <laughs> he just wants to go to Miami for a month. <laughs> if me and Adrian locked ourselves in a room for a month, who do you think is going to have more sales? Please comment below. Kevin, What's up? how many watches have you sold this month so far? Um, not, a lot, not a lot of straight sales, to be honest. I think I sold one, two, three. And then I got, uh, I just bought a watch yesterday with Adrian. Um, 15400 ST AP for 26. There he goes. Yeah, I'm getting it Peter, down. Peter, there um, he goes, full hunt it. I gotta learn it. 15 full hunt it, AP, ST. ST, AP, shout out to Andrew. Um, and then we were able to work a deal with Brian. We were able to take a Vacheron in, and we were able to give him a, um, a AP, the rubber clad, one of my favorites, so. I like it. That was another um, good move. So, moving forward, here's what we got here. Let's see, let's see how close we are. I'm gonna put you on the spot now, buying prices. So we got a 2020. Full set, full length, Yacht Master 2. We got a 2021 Yacht Master 37, Oyster Flex, and we got the 2021 Day Date, Rose Olive. So this, I just, know what just, I... Just write, just write the number down. In total? Yeah, see where we're at. 80K, but I have room underneath. Ooh! I would almost say sold to you. How much did you pay? 77,000. So we're 3K apart. I can yeah. tell you where that 3K comes into play at least. This, I really wouldn't pay 15K. Your spot, your spot on yacht, uh, Oyster Flex and Olive. Yeah. yeah, I'm at 37, you're high. Yeah. 2,000 all. Yeah, it's 37. So it's fair. 3,000 all. It's all right. That's, That's good. Bad. It's a good start. It's not bad, right off the rip. Good start. You found it. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> we got a guy that's paying more than I am. So at the end of the day, I was only off by $3,000. However, I mistook the 37 millimeter for a 40 in my pricing. But overall, I think I was pretty close. Adrian's just a sharp buyer. I'm in a really, really fucked up situation right now. I need you to call the guy and give me a call back at your earliest convenience. Andre, what's up? Uh, so I spoke to the client. I know that we had been asking for 35K. We had a bunch of backs and forth, uh, a bunch of conversations. He's willing to do 25,000 uh, and is able to wire the money tomorrow. Um, and if we can come up, you know, if we can come to terms with that, then everything should be all right. 25,000, I think, I think it's fair. Um, I will relay to my client, I'm sure, listen, he's, he's not requesting any money. It's more or less what I am. I am going to offer him anyway, but uh, I think 25,000 is, is a fair number. And I just want to let you know, moving forward, anything you want to purchase from me, wire up front, anything that I'm buying from you, the merchandise needs to be in my office and then I'm going to pay because until, until, you know, until you can fix this in, in a business sense, then I, I don't see any, any reason to, to move forward. But I really appreciate you, you know, coming to the table and at least making it right. Okay. All right. I'll All send right. you, I'll, I'll send you my wire details tomorrow. Okay, that All sounds right. fair. I appreciate it. All right, bro. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. So the resolution that we came to was a penalty. The client that was selling Andre the watch is going to pay us $25,000 in which we're gonna give our client for wasting his time and for making this an unpleasant situation. This is a situation in which you have to stand your ground and you have to go to bat for your clients, which is something that we do here at Luxury Bazaar. So for the next challenge, you guys collectively get to pick three watches and you're going to sell them to me. Any questions?